A lot of people contacted me about a recent YouTube video presented by George Comez from Stern Pinball with a title and format copied from a show I did three years ago called Should You Buy a New Stern Pinball Machine? In my show today, I'll answer some common questions as we take a fresh look at new Stern Pinballs and bring you up to date. Pinball Australia presents the Pinball Expert Show. I'm Mark Snyder, the founder of Pinball Expert. Stern's recent video, Should You Buy a New Stern Pinball Machine, didn't really outline why you should buy a new Stern Pinball, although some things in Stern's video did identify some very good reasons not to buy one. So let's review some of them. Oh, and by the way, I'll have a message along with some important question for Stern's management later in this show. Firstly, let's watch George talk about Stern's Spike 2 system being an unsung hero. Today, I wanted to talk about one of the unsung heroes um, of our world, which is the Spike 2 system. Um, Spike 2 is the electronic system that, we use, that we've used in all the LCD games. Uh, so starting with Batman forward, um, this is the system that is the basis of everything we do. Spike 2 is unsung because it's not a hero at all, not for owners. Yes, Stern can make new pinballs much quicker and cheaper, but what about when your pinball has a fault or stops working? There was no information on how owners should tackle faults in Stern's video. In fact, I'm not aware of any videos made by Stern outlining how to diagnose or resolve Spike or Spike 2 faults. One of the most telling things about new Stern pinballs is Stern never mention the really short warranty they offer. In the USA, it's only 60 days. Yes, just two months. What does that say about Stern's Spike 2 system durability and quality? Here in Australia, the warranty is a limited six month warranty on just some specified components. There are numerous exclusions. As you can see here, highlighted on AMD's warranty pages. These days, the vast majority of Stern pinball sales are to home use buyers where games are pampered and see far less daily use than in a commercial location like an arcade or nightclub. It's obvious Stern has very little faith in the longevity of their new pinballs by only offering a really short warranty, especially to home use buyers. Stern's business strategy seems to be a new Stern pinball should operate until just after the brief warranty expires, then Stern can begin extracting hundreds of dollars from owners selling them replacement node boards to repair even the minor of faults. Some owners have said their Stern distributor has covered repairs just outside of the warranty period, and that's nice to hear, but with such a short warranty, would you want to rely solely on that? Stern and their distributors are not obliged to provide any no-cost support beyond the warranty period. It's selective, discretionary support at best, which could cease at any time. If Stern made a pinball and a major issue surfaced soon after the warranty expired, how confident would you be that Stern would resolve it at no cost to you? Either way, your warranty will quickly expire and repairs will soon be at your expense. So keep in mind the huge prices Stern charges, perhaps gouges is a better word, for any of the numerous Spike or Spike 2 system replacement node and light boards. Home use buyers I've spoken with all expect their brand new pinball costing almost $10,000 here in Australia to last a lot longer than six months. I wonder if buyers in the USA and other countries think a 60-day warranty is satisfactory for such an expensive item costing so many thousands of dollars. Much lower priced items like TVs, fridges, computers, dishwashers, air conditioners, etc. all have much longer warranties. Would you buy any of these if the manufacturer only offered a two-month or even a six-month warranty with numerous exclusions? Share your thoughts about Stern's warranty in the comments below. 
One last thing you should remember about warranties is many countries have consumer laws with minimum warranty periods or guarantees for new items, so be sure to check your local laws. You may just find you're legally entitled to a much longer warranty than Stern provides. Here in Australia, we have minimum consumer guarantee laws, which state that items must be safe, lasting, with no faults, look acceptable and do all the things someone would normally expect them to do. If you're in Australia, look up ACCC Consumer Guarantees for more details. In my 2017 show, Should You Buy a New Stern Pinball, I warned spike system failures would occur from physical damage to delicate components on the playfield node boards. Here's what I said. Being a microelectronics system, spike circuit boards are far more delicate and subject to physical damage, especially in a prey field environment that produces frequent shock and vibration from the mechanical action of bumpers, flippers and kickers, etc. Historically, electronic circuit boards fitted to pinball playfields eventually suffer fractures and failures in solder joints and components from exposure to the mechanical shock. Spike is no different. In fact, being so small, it's more vulnerable. In November 2017, just a few months after my show, Stern released this service bulletin, which outlined this very issue was occurring. Highlighted in green here, Stern wrote, The D9 diode has physically broken due to the extensive amount of vibration that occurs on a playfield. You can be sure other fragile node board components will break in future from this extensive playfield vibration. Stern's delicate node boards are just not made durable enough to withstand continuous vibration long term, so more failures will occur. That's a certainty. Intermittent problems are also becoming more frequent due to the low quality, inadequately designed connectors. If Stern's node boards, connectors and electronics were made to the same quality found in most modern cars, these problems would rarely occur. If you do some research, you'll discover the internet is awash with Spike and Spike 2 system complaints and problems. There's far more than any other pinball machine system I have ever seen. You have to wonder how widespread the problems actually are, especially when you consider most people won't bother sharing their problems in public forums or on social media. Competitors like Jersey Jack Pinball have periodic issues, but they are a much higher quality machine throughout, have comparably far fewer issues and attract much less criticism than new Stern Pinballs. Naturally, faults occur more often as games age, and Stern Spike and Spike 2 system pinballs seem to age very fast indeed, making them an expensive burden for owners. Owners need to be aware that even experienced pinball technicians often find it time-consuming diagnosing spike system faults because it shuts down when a fault is detected. So if you need a technician's help, the repair will cost a lot more money than other brands. There is no detailed spike technical information available from Stern and this makes fixing problems so much more difficult and expensive than it was in the past or than it needs to be now. Ask yourself this question, will a typical owner with little or no experience be able to fix their Stern pinball? Most owners will need a technician to determine the cause, then purchase and replace an expensive spike node board to fix the problem. The price of a replacement spike node board will push your repair bill up by at least a few hundred dollars every time. You'll notice throughout Stern's video, the focus is on how beneficial the spike system is for Stern's manufacturing. I also noticed George replied to many YouTube comments, but he avoided answering significant long-standing questions. Here's one example. Pin Farmer commented, some manufacturer schematics, etc., on how to diagnose and repair nodes would go a long way. I don't like the Swaptronics approach to diagnosing and repairing. Just thinking down the line when you need spares. George Gomez replied, Pin Farmer, yep, we agree. Wheel Cranker asked, at George Gomez, 
Does this mean that detailed schematics will be available? And if so, when? George Gomez never replied. George never replied to the last important question about schematics, but George said, yep, we agree. So why after nearly six years of continuous requests from numerous owners and technicians, has none of this information ever been provided? It seems very clear to me, Stern management simply don't want to help owners. They don't care about any issues unless it might hurt their sales, which is why Stern copied my 2017 show title in an attempt to draw people's attention away from the unpleasant facts I revealed. In recent years, Stern's management have adopted a yes man approach. They often acknowledge issues and make statements or promises, but they rarely deliver. That's frequently been the case since Stern's spike system pinballs were introduced in January 2015. Plenty of talk, but little action. In Stern's video, George said he has been asked about the spike two system messages. He said this. You know, other things that I get asked a lot about, I get asked about uh, the, the notion of some of the messaging on the um, on the display relative to faults in the system. And we have to do a lot of work, there is no question. Uh, we are about to go into um, a development phase on cleaning up some of that stuff. The game actually has a bunch of built-in diagnostics, as you know, and those diagnostics can be better integrated into the display and into the system. George is 100% correct when he said Stern needs to do a lot of work on this. So why hasn't it been done in the last six years since the spike system was introduced? It should have been done beforehand. I mentioned spikes inadequate node test in my 2017 show, and we are still all waiting for the promised improvement to spikes diagnostics. How much more time will it take Stern? Will you ever do it? No, probably not. But if one day Stern actually did create a useful Spike 2 diagnostic system, would they bother ensuring it could be installed on all previous Spike and or Spike 2 systems you can buy now? One other thing worth noting is Spike 2's test features are virtually identical to those found in the previous SAM system last used in 2014 made Stern pinballs. I'll move to our workshop now and show you a quick comparison. Okay, here we are in the workshop. Let's take a look at one of Stern's recent pinball machines. Here is the Spike 2 test menu. As you can see, it's still displayed in dots. Here is the previous SAM system test menu. As you can see, they are the same. The functions have been copied over. They have not been created for the Spike 2 system. The only addition is a very basic node board test, which is completely inadequate. It only indicates a faulty node board or connection. It does not identify if the fault is a switch, lamp or coil related problem. Most of the outdated SAM test functions are just not useful with the node based Spike 2 system Stern uses today. So you have to spend a few hundred dollars on a new node board and hope that fixes your problem. It's no wonder pinball buyers around the world are flocking to buy good used pinballs made in the 1970s, 80s and especially the 1990s. I've been asking people why they're willing to pay prices much higher than a new Stern pinball for many used 1990s games. They tell me it's because compared to the new Sterns, they feel 1990s games are more fun to play, have similar sophisticated features, are easier and cheaper to repair, more reliable long term and have a far better resale value that continues to climb. George mentioned twice the cabinet node board is the same in every game. He said, This is the cabinet node. The cabinet node is the same game to game, and it does exactly what you'd imagine. It deals with cabinet related switches, lights, things like the shaker motor, um, uh, ticket dispenser outputs, and, and just stuff like that. Uh, right here's the cabinet node. 
And like I said before, it handles switches, coin door stuff, your shaker motor, anything that's related to the cabinet is going to that board. That board doesn't change typically from game to game. It's the same board for all the games. So why aren't common playfield node boards the same in every game too? They do the same job, read switches, control lights and coils, etc. In my 2017 show, I said making non-interchangeable node and light boards is totally unnecessary, but Stern intentionally continues this practice to ensure more sales of replacement node and light boards. Minor faults like replacing a dead LED light can and often will cost hundreds of dollars to fix, especially when you need to replace any node boards with multiple lights. The node board prices Stern currently charge are outrageous in my opinion. The cost to mass produce spike to light boards or node boards is between $10 and $50 each, yet Stern retail them for $200 to $400 each. If you do buy a new node board which does not fix your fault, you may find it's non-returnable and you could be forced to outlay another few hundred dollars to replace a different node board elsewhere in your game to fix the fault. If you happen to need a new Spike CPU board, you'll be stung a massive thousand dollars or more for one of those when it only cost around a hundred dollars to make. Microelectronics systems like Spike are very cheap to produce. Take this new laptop I just bought. The retail price was $399. It has a CPU with more memory, RAM and processing power than Stern's Spike 2 CPU. And this laptop also comes with a similar sized LCD screen, sound and a keyboard all in a protective case. All this for $399, which is this laptop's retail price, not the wholesale price. So you can see Stern are really gouging owners with huge replacement prices for just a new CPU board or any of their individual Spike or Spike 2 system node boards. At Stern, virtually every change continues to focus on cutting costs and increasing profits. Stern's quality has fallen off a cliff. Games are nowhere near as well made or durable. Faults are more frequent useful diagnostics are absent, and while the cost to make a new Stern pinball has fallen considerably, the factory price has risen rapidly. I don't object to a company prospering and increasing their profits, but I do object to being charged a much higher price for an increasingly lower quality, inferior product and being told it's better when it's clearly not. There's no question when Spike 2 is operating, it's modern and capable. The technology is good. The big problems are, Spike is not very durable or well made, and repair costs are the most expensive I have ever known with any pinball machine brand. As I said earlier, this is why people are flocking to buy used pinball machines instead of new ones. Let's watch one more segment with George talking about the power supply. He made some very interesting comments. Alright, so let's, um, let's talk a little bit about the power supply. Um, I have seen a lot of um, a lot of people complaining about uh, the fan noise that it makes and uh, you know I don't disagree uh, it's probably noisier than it needs to be this is an off-the-shelf power supply when we gave the power requirements uh, uh, and the you know the, the rest of the specifications uh, to the power supply company including you know, including a cost specification this is the power supply they they supplied we're working on trying to find a power supply that fits all the parameters of the uh, that that are required in the games. That has a quieter fan, so that um, these things don't make so much noise when they're when the games are idle. Yes, indeed, the power supply fan is very noisy because it's barely adequate. The power drain on this mega power supply is constantly near its maximum output, and that causes the tiny fan to run very fast and very often to cool the overworked components. One obvious solution is to simply install a larger fan that spins slower. It will be much quieter, circulate more air and provide far more effective cooling. Stern knows that, they just don't want to spend any extra money altering or improving the power supply. George mentioned the power supply's cost specification when he said this. 
when we gave the power requirements uh, uh, and the you know the, the rest of the specifications uh, to the power supply company, including you know, including a cost specification, this is the power supply they they supply. Obviously, this price was far too low to purchase a power supply that could easily provide the necessary power without running so hot. Stern chose the absolute bare minimum specifications and lowest possible price, which has been their primary practice over the last six years in almost every aspect of their pinball manufacturing. It's worth noting that previous Stern pinballs and those from other leading brands like Williams, Bally and Gottlieb never had or needed a fan for cooling, and those games had incandescent lamps throughout which drew between 8 and 15 times more power just running the lights alone. When a spike power supply fails, a replacement one is, you can probably guess this, very expensive at around $300 plus shipping. They only cost about $30 for Stern to produce. In Stern's video, George half-heartedly acknowledged the power supply issue, but will Stern actually improve it? After almost six years, I sincerely doubt it. They're just empty words. I could outline other Spike 2 system issues, but I think I've covered enough in this show and back in my 2017 show, Should You Buy a New Stern Pinball Machine. If you haven't watched that show, I highly recommend you do, as those issues remain valid today. In my opinion, Stern pinball machines have become a disposable domestic appliance. They are no longer a robust commercial grade product built to be durable, reliable and easily repaired. They've become a low quality disposable domestic toy. And that's such a shame. Stern did make good quality pinballs in the past. I know, I still own many of them. One last thing I'd like to quickly cover for you is Stern's attempt to sell another home model pinball in 2019 called Star Wars Pin. With a high retail price of $4,500, it's no surprise sales were poor and prices were soon discounted, but sales remained slack. Star Wars Pin has a completely different playfield layout to the regular Star Wars. Its playfield looks to be a reworked version of Stern's Spider-Man home model. Not many buyers saw Star Wars pin worth the huge $4,500 US dollar price tag, especially when you consider a regular Star Wars Pro was $5,900, a difference of $1,400. Here's a playfield comparison of Spider-Man's home model, Star Wars home model, and Star Wars regular Pro model. I rarely comment on a pinball's fun factor, that's for you to decide. However, I strongly recommend you inspect and play any new pinball before buying to avoid disappointment. And this is particularly important with Stern's home model pinballs. I also recommend you play the regular version of any home model pinball for comparison. Stern's home model pin series of pinballs are very poor value for money. You'll see a lot more low quality plastic parts in use and fewer features for only a slightly lower price. If you'd like a preview of what regular Stern pinballs may look like in the future, just examine Stern's recent home models. Historically, they've been a good indicator of Stern's future planning. In my 2017 show, Should You Buy a New Stern Pinball, I covered reasons why home models don't sell well and that's unlikely to change while Stern keeps reusing the same old approach. I know Stern's management will be watching this show, so I'll take this opportunity to speak directly to them now. Stern, your Spike 2 system really could have been a major advance in almost every aspect of pinball design and construction if you had also applied modern technology to improve the reliability, repair time and repair cost for owners. But instead, 
you chose to use the technology to create Spike, a low quality disposable pinball control system designed purely to cut your costs and increase your profits by forcing every owner to buy high price replacements to repair a fault in their Stern pinball. That is a greedy disgrace that betrays every Stern pinball buyer. Okay, now to the questions for Stern. Perhaps George Gomez or Gary Stern will have the courage or conviction to reply, although I sincerely doubt it. But if they do, I will share them with you all in full. Perhaps Stern will copy the title of this show too. Now that would be interesting. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, so thank you Stern. Now my questions for Stern are, why is your warranty so short, especially for private home use buyers? 2. You mentioned the cabinet node boards are the same in each game. Will you ever make Playfield node boards interchangeable between different games? 3. Why won't Stern include in each game's manual a complete list of Spike 2 components and schematic diagrams? In the past, this information was included, or at the very least made available for purchase from every pinball manufacturer, including Stern. 4. If Stern is really developing better Spike 2 system fault diagnostics, when will they appear? 5. How far into the future will you guarantee to support the Spike system with replacement nodes, etc.? 6. How much longer will it be before Stern actually does install a quieter, more suitable power supply? 7. Do you plan to fit a blank front coin door as used on home models to any of your regular range of pinball machines? In closing, I want to say I've been an enthusiastic pinball player since I was a boy and I still play regularly today. I entered this industry in 1983 and I frequently purchased new and used Stern pinballs up until a few years ago. I still buy new pinballs today, in fact I'm looking at buying a Jersey Jack Guns N' Roses, but I don't buy any pinballs made by Stern. Among my private collection of pinballs, I do have about two dozen Stern pinballs from the 1970s, 80s, 90s and 2000s through to about 2015. I no longer own any Stern Spike or Spike 2 system pinballs and I won't buy any more Stern pinballs for private or business use unless there are significant changes and improvements that benefit owners. Our business will continue to service and repair Stern Spike and Spike 2 system pinballs although there's one thing I really dread and dislike and that's having to hand owners a huge parts quote to repair what is often a very minor fault in their game. For those in the market for a used pinball I do recommend buying earlier Stern pinballs made without the Spike or Spike 2 system. Well that brings us to the end of this show. Below there's a link to my earlier show, Should You Buy a New Stern Pinball Machine, along with links to my other shows and the ACCC Australian Warranties. If you're located in Brisbane or a surrounding area, you can contact us for expert repairs, technical help or advice on your pinball machine or arcade video game. Please tap the like icon and leave any comments below. And while you're here, have a look at our other shows too. Be sure to tap the subscribe button and the bell icon here on YouTube and you'll be notified when we add new shows. I'm Mark Snyder, thanks for watching Pinball Expert. See you next time. Would you buy a new stern pinball?